Hi everyone, it's Dees. How's everyone today? I am well. It is morning and I did all my housework yesterday. So this afternoon I plan on doing a little bit more housework, a bit of ironing maybe and cleaning a couple of windows, which I still haven't done. I've done three quarters of the house, but one side of the house I haven't done. So I've got to do that. But this morning I thought I would just have a nice time in the my craft room and make a video because I have almost finished this window series June cross stitch. So I thought I would do a little bit of a whip for you whip and chat just finishing off the main color I might start if I've got time a little bit of um, back stitch then it probably take me a week or so to finish all the back stitch and I'll come back on the same video maybe I might separate them both but then I can show you the completed cross stitch and look I'll show you Isn't that cute? But I wanted to show you, and please take note of what this looks like before the back stitching, because the back stitching makes such a big difference. The colours are beautiful, but uh, if you've never bought a printed cross stitch the design on the paper is usually a little bit darker it comes out uh, a lot darker the threads compared to the picture if you have a look I'll just fold this over so you can see next to each other so yeah on the picture the curtain here looks all pink, but one of the colours here is all, almost purple. Well, it is purple actually, it's just a yeah, so the colours do come out a lot darker. Um, and if you look at the fan as well, but beautiful, I just love that design. So I'll refer, I have been referring to this chart and I will have to refer to that of course for the back stitching but let's get on with just finishing this little symbol here, the green over there and that's number 14, thread 14 which I've already taken out and that's a very soft pale pink almost white and with the lighter colors on this design you can see the print behind it but don't worry if you've never had one of these cross stitch kits before once you've finished the design you just soak it in a little bit of water very carefully I do have a video of doing that I think I if I remember I'll link it for those who are interested and if I forget to link it just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do that for you so um, yeah so this is going to look a lot more fresher cleaner looking because if you look at the dog you can see the blue from the symbols underneath but that will all go all this chart down here will go it will be just a white canvas behind Okay, so let's, I might have to readjust the camera. Let's put all my, oh, just before I start, I'll show you the thread that's left. So plenty of thread left. I wasn't running short on any colour. Beautiful colours together. So I'll just 
just move that out the way. Normally, when I do this, I'll have the camera on my left side here. But because this is such a small cross stitch, I've been able to just say if I'm working at the top, I'll just roll that up close to me and I can just do it all by hand. So. I'll be right back once I've adjusted the camera. Oh, but before I do that, I'm just going to put some of this protective finger tape around the finger that most hurts. I've noticed because I've been working a lot on this, um, this finger was very tender at the tip here. And I have tried using these protectors, but with this particular one that doesn't cover the tip of your finger, um, this is the area, well, uh, under here too, but also on the top when I push the needle through. Um, the needle's actually almost gone through my skin a couple of times, the back of the needle, so be careful. It can still happen. Um, but I just found this one a lot better. So I just take a length. I need to get more of this actually. Unless I can find one of those plastic thimbles. And I just wrap that around and stretch it. It's not sticky, but it's very stretchy. And just be careful not to make it too tight. And that's that'll last a session of me working on the cross stitch. And I have used it. Again, I've unwound it and then used it a second time, but after that you normally need a new strip, so. Okay, so that's the best I can do. And hopefully you'll be able to see. Enough of what I'm doing. I don't need it that far up. I'm just starting my stitching. I've got some books on the end just for the purposes of recording. I would normally just hold this and roll it up as I showed you. I want to keep it as still as possible, otherwise I'll make you quite ill. <laughs> and hopefully this hand isn't going to get in the way. Now, where are you? <laughs> so after I finish this one, I'll be working on another couple, but I might start one off so you can see right from the beginning of the cross stitch what I do. So let me know what project you are working on at the moment, if anything. Whether it's knitting or paper craft, cross stitching, diamond painting. Yeah, even though this is a small design, it's still. I've been working on this, I think, on and off for a good couple of weeks, maybe. Maybe a bit over a week. I'll, yeah. I should actually write the date, start and finish, so that I know how long things take me. But I'm excited to finish all the cross stitching on this and after this little section I'm doing I can start back stitching. My fingers are getting very dry. Cross stitching. But I 
think it's cleaning and all the other things I do as well. So I've been putting on oils and creams on and off all day. I put a tiny bit of oil on the top of my nails and then wipe the excess off because ideally you don't want to be putting creams and things on before cross stitching because it will, you know, get into the fibres if you do it all the time. So. I'll be doing another one of another month of this series and I won't say what the, the bigger cross stitch that I want to start I won't say which one that is yet I'll wait and show you when I make a video <laughs> The other one, the bigger one, will be an 11 count, so that gives you a clue if you've been watching my reviews. Hopefully I've got enough thread on this needle to finish this section off. So I have a birthday coming up in a few months in July and normally I will request a diamond painting from my husband. The last couple of years I've gone on to the Diamond Art Club site and requested a couple of diamond paintings and I was going to do that this year. But because I still have not completed those diamond paintings that I bought last year, I might get on the bandwagon and request a Timu shop <laughs> and see what the big hype is about that. Because... I have been slowly gathering up um, resin items because I want to make some gifts and personal things. So, yeah, I've been uh, collecting a bit of that, but Timu, I've watched a few Timu hauls with resin moulds and things like that and just resin accessories and I have some great moulds and I need some uh, tint and things like that as well and resin itself, resin is very expensive here Bunnings have, I think it's just 750ml uh, $70 and that's a lot of money <laughs> So yeah, I want to check out Timu and get a few craft items, some hair accessories, have a look at the beauty, the lighting. Apparently it's very addictive. But... I've seen some ladies on YouTube, they, um, they, they buy three times a week <laughs> it seems very similar to Sheen S-H-E-I-N in how they pack though um, and I guess that's what makes it cheap as well Because they don't use a lot of packaging so that's the only thing I worry about that's what puts me off of um, buying from Sheen is I've had a few things damaged because it 
it's just not packed properly but I guess it depends on what you buy so we'll see so yeah in a few months a couple of months you might have a Timu haul here on my channel unless I buy beforehand but we will see got a few birthdays coming up as well Hubby and I went into a grocery store last week and um, it was Coles here in Australia and as we entered, you normally enter right into the fruit and veggie section and there are these little gates that open with sensors as you come in and as we entered there was a, a bloke with a backpack on, maybe in his 30s, it's a bit hard to tell, but he looked so anxious, like his adrenaline was rushing, <laughs> and his trolley was full to the brim, and as we came in and those gates opened, he just he almost ran out and then I'd realised that he hadn't paid for his groceries and I just looked around at everyone and they were all watching him as well no security guards or anything but it sort of shocked me but it also made me sad because people are pushed and stressed enough to have to do that to survive a sort of a mixture of emotions of being angry that someone could do that but also being sad that they they did it <laughs> for whatever reason and um, we went straight to the meat section and they hardly had any steak, beef steaks, or beef at all, and very, very, very expensive. So people were finding it hard. Interest rates going up, rent going up, food going up. Utilities, everything. And I think we're all finding that wherever we are at the moment, the way things are going. We've had, I think, nine interest rate increases. on the way out after we finished getting a couple of things we we're just driving down the street close by and we saw that guy with his trolley and he he was in front of an abandoned house so I'm pretty sure he's homeless And unfortunately, I think as time goes on, 
going to see a lot more of that. I have noticed a lot more homeless people around. Almost done. Some areas on the canvas here, um, the thread doesn't seem very flat and nice. And I've made a couple of mistakes, I can see. And I've used the I've used the wax on the thread, so actually I'm just gonna before I go on. Where are my scissors? Oh, right in front of me. It's going to cut that away. Now that it's been overstitched. And quiet here in the mornings. Sorry if you can hear my belly rumbling. I did housework yesterday and I thought I would keep my phone on me while I did the housework because I wanted to know how many steps I do just doing the housework and this is like half a day's worth or more I had rests in between but I ended up or well first how many steps do you think I did I cleaned two bathrooms I did the vacuuming, the mopping, dusting put some washing on the line, did the dishes, brought the garbage bins back in from the road, from the side of the road. How many steps do you think I've done? Or I did. I did almost 5,000 steps. That's incredible, isn't it? I didn't think I did that many just cleaning and my house is just average it's not a big house three bedroom house single floor Hubby and I went for a walk after our tea and I almost, I think, the whole day was 11,000 steps. Which I think equated to 5.5 kilometres. Something like that anyway. So yeah, just goes to show doing housework is exercise in itself. <laughs> Back 
vacuuming is always a, a good little workout to do. I don't really like vacuuming. Oh, and I forgot to put the timer on, so this may end up a bit longer than normal. Silly me. I have it right next to me, and I, I do that a lot. Um, whipping chats always take longer. There we go. Ta da! So I will zoom you out again and readjust. Okay. I'll just finish off at the back here. Now, all I have to do is backstitch. There's a couple of, um, I don't know if they're faults on this design, but there's a couple of strange things. Now, where is it? Oh, over here. This is where I will be doing some French knots, I think. Yeah, backstitch and French knots I've got. I'll do the French knots last. But see this bit here? This is left blank. And I will wait and see when I do French knots. I might be putting a French knot over that. I'm not sure. But it does have that on the design, which is very unusual. I was questioning that, but I thought I would just leave it. See this bit here? It's just left. So I don't know if that's actually a flaw in the design or or if it's supposed to be there. And what else was there? Oh, this bit here. On the curtains. There's a colour that's sort of just jutted out over there. Where is it? you can see but when you look on here that's what it is it's on the two now where is it just near the fan you probably can't see but that's the symbol, the L, and then there's one that chatters over here. And um, it is there, so I just followed it. Okay, now I'm just going to... Put this back on the sheet. Now, I don't know if that's worth keeping, that little bit, but I'll just put that aside for now. And put this back. What I do is, each time I'm using a colour, I will take all of that one colour, whatever I'm working on, off of the board. And then when I finish and I move on to the next colour, because I normally just work on one colour at a time, especially for little ones. I'll just put it back on there. So now it's time to work out the back stitching. So I refer to the illustration at the front as well as the graph. And there's another one at the back. So two colours in French knot. I'll do that last. 
two colours in back stitch. So I think there's some little cupcake looking designs on the curtains. That's cute. So Okay, green number 18, I think I'll do that first, so I'll get the 18 out, and number 33, by the looks of it, will be white, so where's number 33, yes, that will be that one there, and... You can see on the design, there's a lot of white in the wood and on the curtain. And the rest is just with the outlining, the rest of the illustration. Okay, so I have those available. So we'll start with number 18. And I might start now. This doesn't finish, so you have to turn. So I might start at the bottom, the bottom left over here. check I think with back stitch you only need one like each one of these threads is divided in six so with the cross stitch on 14 count I needed two but with the back stitch I think I only need to pull out one and I will just check that I'm pretty sure that's right a thread can be divided into six strands 11 count uses three strands 14 count uses two so this is 14 count now what about back stitch I'm pretty sure it's one where does it say 14 count use one strand for back stitch okay so they tell you everything at the back here which is good so I'm going to pull out one strand Sometimes this works easily and other times it doesn't. There we go. Put that back there and let's use this. This is a really good tool to have. You can get the plain ones on any of the online stores VIP cross stitch have them these so this is basically that put in wedged between some resin whoops I'm doing it wrong that's because I'm on camera recording I'm as blind as a bat. I cannot thread a needle quickly. Oh, look at this. Now and then you'll get this happen with thread. I'm going to cut that bit off. It hasn't happened a lot, but there, yeah, from time to time, I'll show you close. You can see. See that? And I think on the design that I did, here somewhere around I didn't see that while I was cross stitching and now I can't really do anything about it because I'm not going to undo it and I can't even remember I remember it was a cream color 
off white. But okay, where is this design? This is where you really need this stuff. So remember what this looks like beforehand at the beginning of the video. And I think what I'll do is I will put this up. Actually, I'm going to do this different. I'm going to thread it through at the back because there's only one thread. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll finish this I'll just do a bit with this back stitch with you and then I will edit the video and then when I've finished I'll make a quick video just showing you the completed cross stitch I think that's the way to go otherwise this I've only got two or three SD cards and it's just going to have to well I suppose I could put it over onto the computer but Um, anyway, I'll make I'll make two videos. I'll make I'll edit this one and then I'll make a separate one showing you the finished cross stitch. So, oh, I'm already making a mistake. Am I? That's because I'm talking. Yes. Okay. So. Just undo that bit, it just means I've got to thread the needle again. But that's okay. We will thread it again. Do you know what? I laugh because sometimes I can't even thread the the needle over this needle threader. <laughs> But it's still a lot easier than trying to thread the without it. I should have taken it out twice. Right. Let's try this again. is supposed to be at an angle that's better some designs that don't have back stitch and they look really nice without back stitch but other designs like this one especially detailed designs just makes the whole design look so much better. Now I've got to angle this one as well. Oh, I just saw that I've missed a symbol. Just a little upside down triangle just around the dog. Okay, that was naughty of me. Now, I 
I've got to refer to the graph. One, two, oh. Okay, I've got to take that one out too because I've just got to go into the next square a little bit. This is what happens when I'm on camera. I'm not concentrating properly. Now, instead of going in that hole, I'll go about the quarter of the way over, which this is what I find, this is the hard bit for me. But then you'll have a, let's see what I've done, I'll do it closely. Okay, so you start... Okay, got the next one. That was my elbow. You know, I wouldn't be able to sneak anywhere in the house. I wouldn't be able to sneak in the sweets cupboard because my feet crack every time I walk. <laughs> Around the right way. Okay, so the next one is halfway over. By the time I've done a couple of these, because I've got four of them, you could probably do what you want. You could refer to the illustration and not be so fussy doing this exactly the same. I wonder if I need to get a needle, a different needle that's sharper so I can be more precise. There we go. No, that's too far on the right. Just keeping it straight is easy, it's the angles and curves that that get me. Okay, so I will go up to 80 like that. That's where these numbers here come in handy as well. See that? It already looks nice. It's 
still waiting on my car to be repaired. For those that don't know, I was sideswiped a couple of weeks ago. And I think they're fairly busy and they'll probably be waiting. Hubby told me we could be waiting weeks for parts to come in, so. But luckily the car's still drivable. I'm going to have to look up how to do a French knot because it's been years since I've done a French knot. I know it's easy. But I will do that last. Ooh, that one's a bit wonky. I'm just going to leave it there. It's going to give it character. back to the design me a while. Sometimes it can get tricky because there's a lot of thread at the back that's gathered up. Yeah, I might look at another needle actually, because this isn't going through very easily in some spots. I'll just finish down the other side and then I'll finish this video and I will be back on another video to show you the finished design which I'm really excited about actually.
these two here are going to be French knots. The one thing I'm unsure of is uh, on the graph it doesn't tell you to cross stitch under where the French knot will be. But in other places it has the symbols and then the French knot over them. So I'm just going to go by what I think the designs, the graph is telling me. And if it doesn't look good, I can always put a cross stitch under later. I think that's the best way to go. Concentrating. So, yeah, I think this is going to still take me some time, but it's well worth it, believe me. become a bit fuzzy so just to stop it knotting up at the back I'll cut that off I'll remember a while back I asked if anyone had tips on peeling an egg. Well, I had some tips, so thank you, but I've tried them all. Since then, I've watched this video. Now, what's her name? She's hilarious. Chit Chat with Granny Pat. And she, she's 87, I think, but she just tells different stories and now and then she'll do cooking and things like that she's hilarious but she did a video on how on, on oh, I think it was a potato salad recipe I'll link her video if I remember um, and she had this really great way if it works I'll be amazed for me of peeling eggs so I'm going to make a video on that and try it <laughs> that one's a bit wonky too see as soon as I talk but 
wood is not always perfectly straight and this is what's great with cross stitching you can generally follow it like if I wanted I could uh, instead of white I could put a silver metallic through the next a lot of back stitching that I'll do you can just change things up I mean some ladies would be so good at this that they would just outline where they decide they want to and not really follow the design and there we have it our first little bit of back stitching done now I'll zoom out again so you can see but it does make a big difference okay there we go see how that just makes everything pop out and can you imagine that all the way around and the banner over here really needs it as well so that's it for today I'm probably gone close to an hour I would say so if you're still with me thank you so much for watching and yeah I look forward to showing you the finished design take care of yourselves everyone and we will see you next time bye for now